If I asked you, how long will it take to empty this pool, you'd say it wasn't much of a question. A pipe that takes five days to empty the swimming pool will empty the pool in, hmm, how about five days? If I ask you how long it will take pipe two to empty the pool, just as easy, seven days. Duh. But as soon as we wonder what might happen if we used both pipes working together and ask how many days it will take to do the job, we have a very different kind of situation. It's called a rate of work problem. It looks like it might be hard, but it isn't. In fact, I can show you three things that are very easy to do with this problem. First, we can do it wrong very easily. Second, we can estimate the right answer very easily. And third, we can find the right answer very easily. First, a wrong answer? That's very easy. Pipe one takes five days. Pipe two takes seven days. Both pipes, 12 days? Wrong. We can't add them together because it's going to take less than seven days and even less than five days because we have two pipes working instead of one. Here's another easy way to do it wrong. Average it out and pick the midpoint between five and seven. So we say it will take six days to do the job. Wrong. Since one of our pipes does it in five days, two pipes certainly won't take longer than that. The answer will have to be less than five days. So how can we get closer to the right answer? If we consider some alternatives, we can estimate the right answer very easily. All we have to do is imagine that both pipes are the same. First we try two pipe ones and then two pipe twos. If they're both like pipe one, each can do the job in five days. So together, they do it in half that time, two and a half days. If they're both like pipe two, each can do the job in seven days. So together, they can do it in three and a half. But we actually have two different pipes, one slow pipe and one fast. So the right answer is going to be more than two and a half days because pipe two is slower than pipe one, but it's going to be less than three and a half days because pipe one is faster than pipe two. Our answer then is going to be more than two and a half and less than three and a half. But don't go thinking it's exactly between the two, namely three days. That's just another one of those easy ways to do it wrong. But there's an easy way to do it right. All we have to do is shift our point of view and change the units we're talking about. Instead of days to empty one pool, which emphasizes the pool, let's talk about how many pools we can empty in one day which emphasizes days. Only when we know how much emptying each pipe can do in the same period of time can we figure out how much work they can do together. If pipe one drains one pool in five days, then it must drain one-fifth of the pool each day. What about pipe two? It drains the pool in seven days. So in one unit of time, one day, it drains one-seventh of the pool. Now we have a common measure of the work each pipe can do. We have found the daily rate at which each pipe is draining the pool. With that information, we can combine the work done by both pipes and find our answer. The pool is going to be empty in two and eleven-twelfths days. We'll see how to do that in a minute. That matches our original estimate. It's between two and a half and three and a half days. And it's not exactly three days, but it's pretty close as we predicted. Here's a good way to think about the whole problem and solution all at once. We translate the work of each pipe into pools per day, a rate, following the arrows left to right. We then combine the two following the vertical arrow. Finally, we translate the total back to the left to find our answer. We work in a circular pattern with three steps two steps translating information when we follow the arrows from left to right, or right to left, and one step on the right where we just add fractions together. This is a pattern we can use to solve all sorts of problems about rates of work. Once you've got it, you'll find the algebra becomes quite simple. We've already determined how much the pool each pipe drains in one day. We want to know how much the pool will be drained by both pipes together in a day. How do we find that? Simply by adding together one-fifth and one-seventh 
the amount pipe 1 will empty combined with the amount pipe 2 will empty. We find the lowest common denominator, 35. 1 fifth becomes 7 35ths. 1 seventh becomes 5 35ths. We can now combine 5 35ths and 7 35ths, and we find that both pipes working together drain 12 35ths of the pool in one day. But that wasn't the question. What we really want to find is how long does it take to drain the whole pool in days? We deal with that by realizing we now have a simple proportion right out of basic math, and it's solved in two steps. First, divide both parts by 12. This tells us that draining 12 35ths of the pool in one day is the same as draining 1 35th of the pool in 1 12th day. For the next step, we multiply both parts by 35. And now we see that draining 1 35th of the pool in 1 12th day is the same as draining 35 35ths of the pool, the whole pool, in 35 12 days. Notice that our answer has just taken the fraction we started with, 12 35ths, and turn it upside down. Here's another rate problem to try on your own. You can use the same pattern we used in our first example to handle it. Just take it one step at a time. Pause the program, and when you have your answer, click play again, and we will work through the steps together. Let's analyze what this problem tells us as we look for an approximate answer. Bill does it in six hours. Mary does it in four. If Mary was as slow as Bill, together they would take three hours. If Bill was as fast as Mary, Together, they would take two hours. If Bill and Mary work at the same rate, the answer is easy. But they don't. All we can say is that the answer should lie between the two speeds, somewhere between two and three hours. To find the answer, we need to be able to combine the work Bill does to the work that Mary does. We must translate their speeds into some unit that we can add together. To do that, I use the same kind of statement I used in the pool example. Remember? We did that to shift our point of view from one pool to one day. Here I'm going to shift my point of view from one kitchen to one hour. And suddenly we have a way to solve our problem. In one hour, Bill paints one-sixth of the kitchen, and Mary paints one-fourth. We can add 1 sixth and 1 fourth by using the lowest common denominator, 12. This tells us that together they paint 5 twelfths of the kitchen in one hour. But we want to know how long it takes to paint 12 twelfths of the kitchen, the whole thing. If you already understand why it works, you can just use our retranslation method and turn the fraction over. 5 twelfths becomes 12 fifths, which is the same as 2 and 2 fifths hours. But if you don't see why we turn that fraction over, Go ahead and do the math. Once again, it's a proportion. And again, we solve it in two steps. They do 5 twelfths of the work in one hour. Divide both parts by 5, and we find they do 1 twelfth of the work in 1 fifth hour. Then the crucial step. Multiply both parts by 12 to find out how long it takes to do 12 twelfths of the work, the whole job. And again, the answer is 12 fifths. Another way to approach the process of translation, combining, and then translation back is by an equation that represents the word problem we're trying to solve. It's harder to follow, and it's not so good in complicated problems, but it is the math behind the pattern we've followed. We use the unknown x to represent the number of hours it will take for both Mary and Bill to paint the room together. To solve it, we need to remember all the material in the module about equations with fractions you may need to review. We start by multiplying both sides by our lowest common denominator. Then we cancel to remove the fractions. We can now divide to get the same answer we had before, two and two-fifths hours. Good. Our two approaches agree. Now let's do one last rate of work problem together. You're rafting down a river with a friend when suddenly the raft springs a leak. 
you jump to the rescue with a cup. You don't bother to awaken your companion. He's a heavy sleeper. After two hours of bailing, you're sure you can finish the job in a total of five hours without any help. Your friend finally awakens from all that splashing and senses that something's wrong. She grabs her cowboy hat and starts bailing as well. And in two more hours, you're finished. Now here's the question. What if you had been asleep and your friend emptied the whole raft by herself? How long would it have taken her? Is there a way to find out? How in the world do we begin? Let's start writing down the fact. You can begin to see this is a puzzle like our earlier examples, except that it's a little bit more complex and we have a different piece missing. Let's approach this problem the way we did before and see how much the raft you actually emptied in two hours and how much work was left to be done because that tells us how much of the raft you emptied together after she woke up, three-fifths of the raft. Then we shift our units from two hours to one hour. We find that in one hour you empty three-tenths of the raft together. Now we're ready to find out how fast your friend works. Remember, we already know that alone you can empty one-fifth in an hour. Now we also know that you can empty three-tenths in one hour together. The question is, how much can your friend do in one hour by herself? The answer is, she empties the part of the three-tenths that you don't. Your one-fifth is the same as two-tenths, so that leaves one-tenth for her. She can empty one-tenth of the raft per hour. Now, back to the question. You sleep, she works. How long does it take her to empty the whole raft without help? She will have to empty one-tenth of the raft ten times, which will take ten hours. That would be one big job. You can find more examples like this in your textbook to practice solving. Make sure you understand why we ask the question, what happened in what unit of time? Then you'll be ready to apply the same approach to other similar problems you may encounter.